I just, I've been watching a lot of Saturday Night Live, like probably 45 minutes worth of like really good classic clips. So like. Just straight right now, just a main line, get ready. Just go. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do this. Live from my basement. It's Friday night. <laughs> and I'm going to get tired real soon. So let's just. <laughs> let's just roll. Let's just roll. Let's just do it. Why are you so tired, Lex? Um, you I, know. I don't actually need to ask that. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can guess. Why, why, why do you think I'm tired? Uh, work is difficult and uh, life <laughs> is difficult. And then you put the two of those oh. together and it makes a crap sandwich. I was just telling John some stories from work and he was laughing so hard. And I was like, okay, good. So it's not just me that has this like super dark sense of humor. About uh, did you lose anyone? <laughs> I guess you're not allowed to talk about that. No, we're good. Not allowed to say that. But um, so we have a school resource officer and like they are just, I really enjoy them because I feel like they're a very, like they're balanced. Yeah. And they, they know the way of the world, but are also not like. Right. You can still bribe them. Too far one way or the other. Oh, so they bribe you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like a cop to me. Plus they bring me coffee. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's nice to be like, oh, coffee delivery. <laughs> they're, they're bribing me. <laughs> But I'll just ask, like, what's the grossest thing you've ever seen? And they're like, well, oh, oh. I love it. I knew a paramedic who told me a pretty gross story once, and I see it even though I wasn't there. Every time I oh, think, yeah. like, it pops into my mind. I'm like, oh, okay, gross. I had a friend from art school who... Anybody I know? I don't think so, actually. Did you know... Um, who did, like, the big, beautiful paintings with the graphite? I definitely knew somebody named... Uh, not well, and I don't recall them. Wasn't dark-haired... Okay. Was blonde. Oh, I don't know blonde. And if I did, I'm sorry. Look, I was only there for like two ish years. <laughs> Give me a break. One of the. One of the. I didn't make us an itinerary, and I've heard that's the sign of a really great, well organized podcast. Um, but I realized that last week when we recorded, you did have an itinerary, and I got off that immediately and screwed that pooch. <laughs> that pooch got screwed, that bed got shit. <sighs> And afterwards, I was like, what is this? Oh, shit. <laughs> the itinerary I didn't follow. No, I am I feel like we had a loose one from, from a text conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had many loose shits. Oh, it's going to be one of those episodes. It's always one of those for me. Uh, are you playing um, anything interesting this week? No, I am. Uh, no, actually, that's not true. I am playing something. I am re... I'm making my way through... Making my way? The... Is that a song? Uh, it's uh, a reference that only people who watch Critical Role will get, and I wish I hadn't just done oh. it. <laughs> but we'll leave it in there for John. <laughs> he doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know who does? Who does? Fiona. And she went hey. to go buy Power Wash Simulator after you talked about it. Yes, Fiona! And then she found out it cost 35 fucking dollars and nearly had a fit. She's like, not for power washing. No, it's worth it. It is worth it. Okay. You tell I'll her. I'll text her. I'm it texting is, her right now. It is 100% worth it. It will pay for itself, especially once you listen to Dateline. Figuratively. Whilst you are playing it. Uh, I also got a text that my, uh, the only Dateline I know is a uh, ground up prune that I snort. Uh, apparently that joke went over really well with my older brother who I found out listens to our show as well. <laughs> so uh, shout out to my brother. <laughs> Like them dad jokes. <laughs> he is also a father. Uh, no, I started playing my way through Lu the Luigi Mansion series. So I'm oh, on nice. game one right now on the old Nintendo DS. Oh, you got your DS out. Got the DS out. And so I'm just playing for like, honestly, 15 minutes at a time before I fall dead asleep. And then I wake up at 530 wishing for sweet, sweet release from... <laughs> This mortal coil. Oh my god! Did you feel better or worse when you were in an office and not in a school? No, I actually, I was actually saying to John, I feel way better. I'm like, I feel re-energized. Oh I'm happier. I feel like I have purpose. I am very tired. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I was supervising basketball until about ten o'clock one night this week, and the other teacher who was there with me. All week we were like, oh my God, we're getting old because both of us were like destroyed for the rest of the week. They're like, I stayed outside of my house past 10 p.m. on a weeknight. Uh, what? I just don't know why we can't get someone else to do that. I mean. Why does it have to be you? I, I'm happy to be there. It was good to watch the kids. They did a great job. It was 
the the worst thing of the evening was one of the kids was talking to someone on FaceTime a little loud. And I was like, hey, bud, turn it down. And he was like, oh, sorry. Best night out. Like, they were so good. But being awake. No fights. No fights. It was wonderful. Everybody was perfect. But I was just so tired. Like, until this very moment, I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> But I also get up super early too. So that's uh, I get up at like five or five thirty. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. I have been also eh. been getting up at five ish, five thirty. Yeah, but you're growing humans, like raising them. Yeah. Well, yeah, not growing them. Uh as far as I know. I mean you water and feed them. What's that? Yeah, they're like house plants. You just have to give them a little water once a week, turn them towards the sun, rotate them. They do move around slightly more than a house plant. Slightly. Slightly. Uh, unless you do a time lapse on your house plant and then they are shaking it. Yeah, I love those when you see them like breathing and moving and like yeah, kind of, just... they become like the the wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man. <laughs> wacky waving incredible flailing arm man. <laughs> wacky wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man. Yeah. That's oh my right. god. Is that the way you say it? Yeah. Because he's a wacky... No, I can't think about it too much because then I'll say it See, wrong. See, I say wacky, waving, inflatable, flailing but arm they're man. they're tubes. They're also tubes. Yeah, they are tubes. They absolutely are tubes. I'm not trying to take that away from you. I'm just saying that's the way I've always said it, uh, which isn't an indicator that that is the correct way. I think uh, we both realize that I have many things that I say that are not correct. And I say them anyhow. They don't have a correct name. Okay, time for just to be pedantic. 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 So the original name for these dancing beings was air dancers, or the artist who created them also referred to them as tall boys, which I think is hilarious. The artist's name is Peter Minshall. He's a Trinidadian carnival artist, and he created these air dancing tall boys for the 1996 Summer Olympics. You probably know them better from Family Guy as wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men from the Al Harrington's wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man emporium and warehouse. So if we're going definitive, it's probably that, but Tall Boys is the winner in my books. I worked with a guy once when I was working at a grocery store, which shall be unnamed. Whole Foods. Yeah, that's the one. The Canadian Whole Foods. <laughs> the Calgary Whole Foods. And he came up to me and he was just like, how do you say the following words? And he just practiced saying words with me. Uh, a, an English language speaker from birth was just not sure how to say words like platypus. Huh. How were they saying platypus? Platypus. <laughs> no, that person was fucking with you. No, no, they were dead serious because they came because it was quite. They did it in fear of judgment, and so I'm oh, telling wow. people now, 15 <laughs> years later, that he was very much like, "Is this how it's said?" And I was like, "Yeah, man." And he was like, "Oh." If they do, out of some sort of wild chance, listen to this show, they're just going to feel so special that I'm not saying their name. Platypus is wild. Yeah, that was a wild one. I can't. Remember. There was a few other ones. Yeah, because uh, I could see platypus maybe, but like platypus requires like an e between the t and the y, like a ladybug, platypus. Yeah, if it had a D, maybe. But I wonder if people, if you're listening to someone say platypus with an accent, like mm. a traditional Australian individual. Like, no, but maybe that's the only time they'd ever heard it said was by an Australian person on the TV. Oh, it's a platypus, eh? Right? Um, the other one was manatee. He was calling them manatees. Oh. And I was like, yeah, okay. Okay, as somebody who couldn't say meme for a long time, I'm not going to, or macabre. Took me forever to figure out macabre. I worked with a different person. She, I worked with a different person who called them memes. Oh yeah, see, I in my, I never said the word out loud because I think in my brain it was meme or mimi. Meme. Is it a meme? Mem- is it a mimi? Meme. 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 <laughs> meme. <laughs> and macabre, I would be like macabre. <laughs> I always think of chupacabra when I see macabre. <laughs> so do I. That's why I said it. macabre. And people are like what? You know, the song. Yeah. Uh, I went on a date with somebody once. What did I mispronounce? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just embarrassing. But then they pulled maple syrup out of their purse. So tit for tat, I guess. That really escalated right there. Like I said a word wrong. They pulled a condiment out. I don't know. Yeah. I, is maple syrup a condiment or a sauce? In Canada it is. Yeah. Okay. Fair. A I sauce is a condiment. 
Yeah, fair enough. I mean, okay, are there like sauces that aren't calmed condoms? Condom mods? <laughs> I mean I need your help to say this word. Condiment. Condiment is some a condiment is something that I, where are you going with this one? There's a I don't know. There's a joke there, but there's I couldn't a, stop laughing long enough to make gotta it. Got to workshop that one. It's like a it's like, it's like a package that you get. You get both a condom and a mint. A condom mint. Uh, I feel like a sauce can be a condiment, but a condiment can't be a sauce. Right. Like a sauce is like gravy, but gravy isn't a condiment. It could be. You could pour it on a sandwich. Is it? See, and then you have barbecue sauce, which is clearly a condiment. Well, and then you could have like pasta sauce and you could use it as a dip or something, mm. but you wouldn't have like mustard on pasta as like a sauce. Yeah. And if you poured pasta as sauce out of a bottle, it wouldn't necessarily make it a condiment. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is our best. <laughs> our very best. How about swinging? I like it. Uh <laughs> All right, you were playing something. I don't remember. Luigi, in preparation Luigi, for today. In preparation yes. for this most important episode. And uh, I have I've played literally nothing, oh. just Civ 6 again. So this was a great addition to our, our format. This, what are you playing <laughs> this week? Uh, nothing. Just 10 minutes of Civ while I hide in the bathroom, taking a shirt <laughs> away from screaming children, pounding on the door, going, Dad! <laughs> Uh, have children is what you're saying. I'm saying switch up which bathroom you go to because otherwise they can <laughs> immediately find you. <laughs> you just have to leave the light on, shut the door so they think you're in there and then go to one and just poop in darkness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> poop in darkness is like the nicest sounding thing anyone's offered this week. Poop in darkness sounds fantastic. I used to take uh, silent. rain showers when I was feeling down and I think poop... Uh, poop, dark, in poop, 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 poop in darkness is the uh, married with children equivalent of that. <laughs> the The rain shower is when you think you're going to be alone forever, and the poop in darkness is that little moment of pleasure you get after you have kids. Oh, you're slamming that Pepsi! I am so jealous. I'm really thirsty. I should oh. drink water, but <laughs> you are amped up. Yeah, let's do this. You got the fire. If SNL is what works for you, I'm going to try it too next time. I'll send you some clips. I'll send you the ones I watched. I honestly, my prep was falling asleep uh, oh, no, in, in, in the toddler's bed, <laughs> putting him to sleep before. <laughs> Daddy's just going to close his eyes for a... <sighs> Confusedly waking up and trying to figure out where the hell I was. <laughs> the fuck? Like, no, I don't have kids. This isn't my room. <laughs> where am I? I had a dream once and it was like a Star Trek Jean-Luc Picard type dream where I fell asleep and John and I had a kid and we raised it and I woke up. Sorry, you and John Luke? Or no, like John? John and like my my current partner. Okay, okay. But it was sorry. in line with that like it, it makes sense in my head. Stay with me. Um you know, like I woke up and I was like, Where's the kid? And John was like, fuck it. And the kid the kid was Jean Luc? No. <laughs> Did you say you had a dream about John Luke, or am I having a fever dream? You're, no, you're right. I'm just not making sense. Stay with me. I had I'm a sorry. dream where John. <laughs> I had a dream. My my partner in life. Yes. For real, yeah. not fake life. In this dream, we had a baby, and it was a boy, and I took care of it, and we were raising it, and we were taking it to the park and things, and then I woke up, and. In the moment I realized I didn't have a child, I started crying oh. because I was like, dude, I was just so confused because I was like, where's the kid? Oh my God. And then John was like, we don't have a kid. You were sleeping. And it was oh like, oh my that, God, you slider. I slider, but it was like that episode of Star Trek where Jean Luc passes out and lives a uh, whole life and then wakes up and is all and f plays the flute. Yes, the flute. I the had flute. a flute dream. And it was weird. You had a flute dream. You yeah. might have, yeah, you you were in some sort of penal colony it was, or something. It was a civilization. O'Brien. Put their, like, the mem the history up in the air so mm -hmm. that. The yes, beacon. the beacon. The yeah. beacon. Ugh. Voyager did the same thing, but less yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can only do it once. What are you doing? And that pretty much sums up Voyager, doesn't it? <laughs> Great idea. Did the same thing, but less good. Yeah. In theory. Uh, I have only ever had one of those dreams, and they are upsetting as hell, and it is my older yes. brother. Shout out. Because apparently you listened to this dumb show, uh, you died, and I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit, my brother!" And it's the only time I've ever woken up and not been like a hundred percent immediately aware that I had a dream, and it was like he's dead, and like it wasn't like yeah. I immediately started thinking about him being dead. I woke up with an awareness that he was gone forever. Mm, yeah, and then like an hour later, I was like, "Wait, 
my brother's not dead. Like he's he's very much alive. Yeah. Whoa. How did I just spend an Weird. hour existing in a a type of existence where he was dead? So weird. So fucked up. Dreams are. I had a dream once and I woke from it, but like I was a deep sleep and then I heard my. Or did you? Well, I think I was asleep. <laughs> but I heard my dad just saying my name loudly, and I woke up. And I was like, the fuck? And I text my mom and I told her what happened. And she was like, he's fine, but that's weird and scary. Because I was like, just want to make sure everybody's there, you know, and cool. Let's go shit. Let's yeah. go shit. Let's go shit. Yeah. And no, she was like, no, he's here. He's watching football. And I was like, oh, God. Okay, cool. <sighs> Wasn't in a car or anything? Like, all right. That's awesome. Oof. Don't like it. Uh, let's hit the theme song. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. This is Dork Matters, a dorky podcast for dorks. I am your dork dad host, Ben Rankle, and with me every single time is your Ed Dork Cater, Lexi Hunt. Bello. Bello. Mayo. Bow, bow. I don't know. My youngest son adds bees to word, and that's what that just sounded like. I like that. Sounds like he said bello. Bello. He wants up. He said bup. <laughs> that's bup. So, cute. so fucking cute. Uh, did I tell you a kid that is at my place of employment was showing me this video of her pet bird? And it's like a little love bird or something that can talk. And when she goes like uh, presses on its beak, the bird says, boop. Uh, you did, but I would hear that story every week. And in fact, I think that should be a new bit. You should just ask me. if. Hey, Ben, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to do that. <laughs> did I tell you about the bird? <laughs> this is what it's like with people with dementia. We're like, did I ever tell you? Yeah, grandma, just tell it again. I probably have dementia. I think or, we all do better. Or dimensions. Speaking of dimensions, let's go into the second dimension and talk about Mario. It's a me, a Mario. Oh, I love Mario. Who I was looking on my phone. We had a list of things that we were going to talk about. Like we were. Oh, yes, yes. I did send a list. We did. We were talking it back and forth about what we were going to maybe talk about. Let's talk about Mario, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the red shells and the green shells that could be. That was very good. Thank you. Thank you. I've always wanted to be a bard. I know. We talk about this and I always tell you the bard is the worst. Part. <sighs> I'm so sad. I know. That's why no one likes me. It's just sit in the corner singing <laughs> songs on his lute. I'm a spoony bard. I used to like run up and down the street in front of my parents' house when I was younger, singing to myself, splashing in the gutters. And then one day, one of the women across the road was like, oh, I heard you singing. I was like, oh, no, you my didn't. God, never again. She's like, no, it was so sweet. I was like, it was not. You tell anyone. And I'll cry. I'll cry a lot. I was 18. Oh, God. Of course you were. Um, we had two different text conversations going on about what Mario. So there was the previous one where we talked about best ancillary character, best best villain. Oh, nice. Best princess, best game, best Mario Kart combination, best theme song. Ooh. Or just any best Mario song, any of the yeah. song. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go. Let's hit it. Let's hit the ground running. Uh, let's do our, our new thing where we actually explain what we're talking about for a yeah. second first. Let's do it. Um, so you can talk about Mario in one of two ways. You can talk about the character or the franchise. We're doing both, so I'll do a little bit of both, which is Mario is a Japanese video game character designed by Shigeru Miyamoto, and he is the title game, uh, sorry, the title character of a video game franchise of the same name. There is almost zero chance that anyone listening to this doesn't know who Mario is. I don't think you can exist without knowing who Mario is. Yeah, even non-video game players know who Mario is. Yeah, my parents know who Mario is. <laughs> uh, I mean, my parents are the ones who got us our first Nintendo, and before that, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So that's Mario. He's depicted, this is Wikipedia, not me, depicted as a short, pudgy Italian plumber who resides <laughs> in the Mushroom Kingdom. I mean, it's accurate, but why does it feel rude to write it that way? It do, when you, I think with the current state of things, when you're just like Italian, like why does he got to be Italian? Why isn't he just like, he's a guy? Yeah. And 
and short and pudgy. Like, come on, don't body <laughs> shame the guy. He's a he's a gentleman who is uh, wearing overalls, who who likes to jump yeah. in the air sometimes, and has been in video games that have I don't know sold almost eight hundred million copies. I think of titles that he's been in or like been involved in in some capacity uh, is one of the most selling yeah. characters ever. Uh, star of one sort of would you call it a cult classic film? Yes, absolutely. Uh, John Leguizamo okay. as Luigi. Classic. Yeah, yeah. And Bob Hoskins as Mario. Yeah. Uh, a TV show uh, that was much watched and <laughs> much remembered. Uh, and then an upcoming film that I am very much looking forward to. And we can talk about that a little yeah. bit, uh, but we'll just keep it moving for now. I wanted to start with this. What was your very first Mario experience, Mario game? Super Mario World. Okay, for Super Nintendo. So yes. you jumped in on the Super SNES. The SNES. Yes, we did. Gotcha. Yep. And did it blow your mind? Yeah, I remember we were playing at my cousin's house, and it was the first time I think we ever left my parents alone for a long period of time. So my dad was like, well, now what is this? Yeah, you have to wait a while before you're you you know you're comfortable leaving your parents on their own. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure they're mature enough for it. No, but I remember we played it with my cousins, and then we came home, and my sister and I were like, there's this game. And my parents were intrigued by it, and uh, we wound up getting it a little while later, and they didn't want us... I think my mom kind of freaked out after we got the game because she was a teacher and went to school and heard about like the horrors of video games and addictions and all these things and came home and was like, you are mm. not allowed to play a lot. So we only really had that game. We, we played the hell out of it because mm. she refused to buy us any more games for a long time. Oh, that's wild. Um, mm -hmm. Weirdly enough, my first was uh, Mario Bros. Not Super Mario Bros. Mario Bros. Okay. for the Atari and Donkey Kong as well. Oh, uh, you know, yep. the first outing. I don't know where the hell we got it from, um, but when I was still little, still living in, in Edmonton, uh, my dad had an Atari for us somehow. Hmm. Uh, and we played the hell out of Mario Bros. and Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was a good one too. Yeah. And then we got to moved our family when I was around seven to Calgary and uh, we we had like five kids at that point and uh, so my parents bought two Nintendos somehow uh, I still don't know how they did that like we were not well off and uh, one was for the girls and one was for the boys and it was supposed to cut down on fighting interesting and did it it must have I mean you can't get rid of fighting with five kids but you can cut it down <laughs> uh, so we didn't have two Nintendos I imagine it must have been it, it could have been much much worse Right. Yeah. Just looking through the list of games, did you so ever many. play Mario's Cement Factory? <laughs> no, I. Is I've that, never did that heard get released this. in North America? Because there are quite a few gems that did not make their way over. I don't think it did because it was released in 1983, and I feel like I would have played it. Yeah. Yeah, I wow. feel like. Uh, yeah, there's all sorts of cool. Like, I don't want to go into like the stuff that I'm sure other, mm -hmm. other, I don't know, articles and podcasts have done. Like all his history about being Jumpman first, and then being a carpenter. Mm. Blah blah blah. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, he becomes Mario. Who he's named after. Stories change about that as well. Blah blah. blah. Whether his name is Mario, Mario, or just Mario as a mononym that comes and goes a bit. Although I think officially right now the party mm -hmm. line is that it is Mario, Mario. Oh. Okay. Um, after it being not Mario Mario for a while, um, I was just reading a little anecdote about after one of the creators passed away, one of the other people involved with his creation was like, no, nah, I'm going to go along with it. It's Mario Mario now. <laughs> sure. I mean, like whatever keeps people happy. What do you want to throw down on first? Your favorite game? Yeah, let's talk about our favorite Mario games or games where Mario appears in some capacity. Oof. What do you think? Well, I mean, I want to go pure Mario first, okay. I think. Yeah, that's, And I that's think my it. favorite, the one that I have played the most is probably Super Mario Brothers 3 uh -huh. uh, Nintendo. Um, that was my, my formative. That's the game that shows up in the seminal classic movie, The Wizard, uh, where they use warp pipes. And I'm like, you're missing yeah. so much. Why would you skip so many worlds? How are you supposed to get points like that? But whatever. Um that one sort of cemented Mario for me. I mean, I love Mario 2. I love Mario 1. Mario 1 was difficult. I think people forget how difficult that game was, especially if you're like eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those controllers are digging into your hands and you sweatily try to jump over spiky boys and stuff like that and miss pits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Mario 3, I think uh, it blew my mind. You start getting like wild power-ups. You're getting like 
you know, the raccoon ears and you can do wild yeah. things like hold down your controller and duck behind like parts of the the game scenery and run into secret areas and get warp whistles and become a tanuki in, in World 5 and turn into a statue. It was wild. It was big. It was yeah. wild. It was it was immersive. That's that's mine. It, it holds my heart. And then when the Game Boy Advance uh, SP clamshell came out while we were in uh, college, uh, that got me through the the ported version of that got me through many art history classes. Oh, God. <laughs> it's nice to have something on the background while you're playing a game sometimes. So yeah, yeah. One of those art history teachers droning on in fake British accents. <laughs> that's a good choice. A good choice. I like that. What are you going to go with? I have a suspicion, but let's hear it. I, okay, I'm kind of on the fence because a part of me wants to say Super Mario Galaxy because mm-hmm, I love that mm-hmm. game. Oh, it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Revolutionary. But in terms of like part of my history and tied to like who I am as a person, oh. Super Mario 64. Like I feel like that was what really the like... The third dimension. Yeah, like the... Throwing the penguin off of the side. Mm-hmm. Oh, the wall kicks yes. will work. Oh. And I feel like that really, it rehooked me to video games. Oh, the penguin slide race. Yes. Oh my God, so stressful. Well, and when you're, I think there's like the one level where you're swimming around and then like the eels are popping up at you. I was scared. It was terrifying. It was terrifying, but it was so much fun. And in 3D. And my mm-hmm. dad, I remember him watching me play and he was just like, wow, this is... This is amazing. Oh, video games have come so far. So lifelike. Yes, like just was like in love with it. But then because of that, I think that's what hooked me back in with video games because, you know, like I was kind of not really interested in it. And then I don't remember how or why. Oh, no, I do. I had a PlayStation. (laughs) My sister (laughs) brokered an exchange between her friend and myself. Arms dealer. And I... Uh, switched my and my PlayStation for his N64 for a couple months. Now, had you finished playing Final Fantasy VII at that point? Yes, I had. Okay, that's what matters. Yeah, so, and she knew that I wasn't really playing games, and so she's like, oh, well, maybe he wants to get a PlayStation, PlayStation, but he's broke right now. We could play Goldeneye and all these other games, and so we did a swap. Mm. And, uh, yeah, kids these yeah, days don't understand great. about swapping. No, they don't. It was a big part of that, hey? We had to swap toys, yeah. Kids I remember these days. like friends coming over and kids going through like my days. CDs and going through my games and going through like mm-hmm. yes and being like, can I borrow this or can you make me a like for a CD? Can you make me a copy? Yeah. And I remember there was in my high school, someone was like black market printing Dance Mix ninety five CDs because <laughs> everybody wanted Dance Mix ninety five. You got to get Dance and Mix ninety five. Like, it was the jam. Space man. Space Such a good wait. Is that big shiny? I think hits? that's big shiny tunes. Oh, that might be big because that was Biff oh, naked. Big this tunes. one was just like, What yeah. is love? Baby, don't oh, so baby, good. don't hurt. And we me. would drive our stupid no cars around me. and listen to that. No more getting high, forgetting to drive through lights. Uh, I, I wasn't no? friends with no, I wasn't part of the drug brigade in high school. I was part of the oh, oh, drug yeah. brigade. How dare I you? I was part of the. Guys, fun is fun, but it's time to go home. It's 8.30 at night. You were not a brigade. (laughs) Uh, I'd get in trouble if I was out past 8.30. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was basically who I am now, but in a slightly... The person we know and love and think is great. (laughs) Thank you. No problem. (laughs) (laughs) We deserve to have some nice moments. Uh, This is my new voice for the podcast. No, oh my God, no. So, okay, I'm going with... uh, uh, Mario 64. 64. I'm going with this it. This is a great choice. Great, great choice. Yes. The portraits. Yeah. Jumping through them. It was awesome. It was uh, a great game. It was magic. It was great That's game. That's magic. Yeah. Jumping through portraits to go and... Ugh. But a close second. That Bowser fight at the end is close scary. Close second. Super Mario Galaxy. Oh, it's such a it beautiful game. Gorgeous. And you're like, whoa, this is different. Like, this is still Mario. And the optics of, like, jumping around in space and pulling on, like, the different gravities of the different planets and things. Oh, and it makes you kind of sick at first. It's a really great uh, sort of mechanic to add into to Mario, the, the formula, while keeping the essence the and same. I, like, everything about that game was beautiful and really well thought out. And then you get hit with Super Mario Galaxy 2. Ugh, just, mm. it was great great three games right there i have to admit i didn't play the sequel (sighs) i I just missed it somehow it was it was worth it i would highly recommend playing it did you play galaxy 3 i didn't think there was a galaxy 3 
That was a trick question. Yeah. I didn't know if there was one either, so there I thought was I'd no ask. Galaxy 3. No, because then that we start getting into like the Super Mario remakes of things. Right, right. and like we're the like... side-scrollers, Super yeah. Mario New World, or New Super Mario World and stuff like that. And I enjoy that stuff, but nothing revolutionary. It's like the Mario 3D world, yeah, yeah. where you're like the little cat that runs up things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cat is cute as hell. Yeah. But it's not revolutionary until you hit uh, until you hit the, the latest one, Odyssey, where it suddenly becomes oh, like... Yeah. Odyssey is a very 64 or Galaxy moment, I think, in yes, the, 3D, it is. the 3D Mario. Uh, and it's a beautiful, fun, exciting game as well. Well, I, what I liked about that game is what I also liked about the newest Kirby game, where things that you would have thought were funny as a teenager, they've done. Like, I remember talking to friends, like, wouldn't it be funny if you threw your hat at the dinosaur and then the dinosaur became Mario? Like, that type of, like... <laughs> stoner idiot conversation that you have with your friends like what if kirby became the vending machine and shot things out that kirby game is so much (laughs) better than i expected it to be it was so much fun it's a lot of fun i played a lot of that with my father uh who suddenly had a a love of kirby thanks to that game and that delights me uh, so we got our favorites. Do you have a least favorite? That's hard to choose, I know, but or one that just didn't connect with you. I don't like the Mar. Okay, please don't hate me. I don't like the Mario Maker games. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I just I'm not I don't throw shade. I don't vibe with them. Like I don't like. I want to play the game. I don't want to make the game when it comes mm-hmm. to Mario. And I get the idea of that. And I I was having fun with it for a bit, and then uh, and I, a, a friend of mine was like, "You're not doing Mario games properly," and I was like. Ah! It's like your games, they don't have the right like vibe of a Mario game. Like these are the things that are required for a proper Mario level. And I was like, Yeah, like you've ruined the fun. You're not being creative properly, Ben. So I feel I feel you. I bought the second Mario Maker and I was just like, nah, it's not for me. I think I want to play it as well. I don't want to make the levels. That's not what I want to do. I want yeah. uh, I want to play them. And I know you can do that in Mario Maker. You can play weird, weird levels. Yeah, but they get that... stressful. They're like the worst parts of Mario. Yes. I feel like I talked about this when we had Jordan on the show to talk about the roguelike games Mm -hmm. and I appreciate them. But when a game is hard for the sake of like pissing people off and having them stratted, I I don't get that. I don't like that. Yeah. I want to learn a little bit. Like I want to have to time things. I want to have to understand things, but I want to have a flow and Mario's always had a good flow. Mm -hmm. That's what matters to me. And I guess that's what matters to other people too. They just know how to do the flow better I than guess. I do, so they can make really difficult games. I just, but it's like Cuphead. What the hell is the point of Cuphead when you can't even get like ramp up a little bit? The first boss, we we played Cuphead, and I loved everything about it until we got to the boss, which is fucking almost immediately. And you have to like completely memorize yes. every single thing that that character does and time it properly. Uh, I'm like, how's that fun? Timing sh- bullets isn't fun for me. No, it's like learning choreography. Like, what are you doing? Which I'm not saying you guys can't enjoy it. People enjoy sure. it. Enjoy what you enjoy, but it's not for me. No. Makes me stressed. Uh, similarly, <laughs> Mario <laughs> Tennis is probably my least favorite. I've never played it, but I've heard people that love it, love it, and people... Feel, they, they they just feel very strongly about it. Specifically, the most recent one, um, the the mechanics to it didn't ever click with me, and I couldn't play properly, and I was just losing constantly. And I'm like, how is this a fun game if I can't understand the mechanics? Same as what we're talking about with Mario Maker, etc. And it's just like, if I can't understand the mechanics and can't play this and enjoy it, or at least turn the difficulty down so my you know smooth brain can handle it. My, my large foreheaded <laughs> primordial man brain can handle this Neanderthal brain, uh, then then it's not going to be fun for me. Yep. So Mario Tennis, sorry, but you don't do it for me. I'd rather play Mario Strikers. Ugh. Yeah, soccer Mario isn't my thing. No. <laughs> Boo, sports games. Who's your favorite character? <sighs> Luigi. Do you have a favorite? No, just Luigi. Okay, Luigi and Yoshi, I'm going to say. We have a daily double on Luigi. Luigi's always been my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because I was second controller. Oh, I see. My older brother got Mario, and I had to wait for my turn to, to, you know, hope he'd die on a level so that I could (laughs) play with Luigi. Aw. And I was, you know, the second born son. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just like Luigi. Luigi Luigi's always been my homeboy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I didn't realize this. I've always known that Luigi was the younger brother. Yeah. Um, but apparently he is a fraternal twin that's younger. 
Oh. So he, they're twin brothers, but he's fraternal, and he's the second. I don't think I knew that they were – yeah, I didn't think I knew that. I just, I just read that recently. Also, that makes me think of another game that I don't want to miss talking about, um, which might be one of my favorite Mario games, but it's a weird one. Which one? Uh, Super Mario RPG. <gasps> oh, yes. I love that game. Yeah, of course you do. Yes. Because it's Square Enix or Square at the time, yes. right? I lo- and uh, We talked about this. It's so good. It's an amazing game. We have talked game. about it a bit. And it is – it's hard to find. You can't find it anymore. And the reason is, is because there's like a licensing right issue Ugh. with it because uh, Square created a couple characters for the game. Like, what's his name? Uh, the the puppet character, the Pinocchio character. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whose name I can't remember. I can remember Mallow, but I can't remember the Pinocchio character. Uh, Jiro or something like that. Uh, anyhow, so they created him. And so there's like licensing issues with Ugh. releasing the game. Come um, on. But it was a brilliant game. And so it that's why really also was. you end up with Paper Mario as the RPG mm-hmm. series going forward on the main consoles. And then on DS and the handhelds, you get the uh, mm-hmm. Mario and Luigi whatever RPG game. They're so fun. And they're great games. They're they're so much fun. And they're beautiful too. I really like the most recent uh, Paper Mario that came out on Switch. And that was great. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was like that the one origami called? one. The origami one. Yeah. yeah, they are very interesting and creative with the uh, the sort of mechanics that they add into the game. Yeah, and that's what I like about it. I like it when it's not just aesthetics that they're like, oh, let's make it funny by using paper for this game. Like, but it actually matters to the uh, you know the mechanics of the game and how the game plays. And I love that. Well, I just I love the stickers that you create that you are gathering that become a huge part of some of the boss battles. My favorite is like the giant fan. Oh. <laughs> when you use it, it rises up mm-hmm. like some type of like horrible monster out of the ocean and then just blows all the shit off of it's cool. the game. Did you find <laughs> awesome. the sort of battle mechanic in that a little bit stressful? Because I sure did. Because uh, you're going in that weird clock thing where you have to like move around yeah. and find, find the hit. There was a couple times where I found it actually really challenging but i like that a little bit more than just like hopping on shit moving on because you could figure it out yeah you can figure it out eventually yeah and then you feel like you're you're super smart when you do get it yeah it, it, it's just a little that's what i like about the rpgs a little bit is just making the battle a little more manageable but not full button smashy yeah. chaos you know what, square nintendo if you're listening it's time to sort things out and uh <laughs> I don't want you just to re-release the old one. I do want that, but I also want you to make a new Super Mario RPG. Yeah. Like beautiful oh, wouldn't glory that be great. glory filled. Yeah. Bring it back. I love it. Um can I tell you why I love Luigi so much? Absolutely, yes. Because he is scared but he does things anyway, and I always thought that that was such a great role model of like no one no one said you can't be scared mm-hmm. but just do be scared anyhow. and do it yeah. anyway and i think that that's such great life advice Absolutely. for anybody is just to just do, do it. it and i love all those somebody should put that on a shirt uh maybe a little check mark we like check just we just it. did it <laughs> i think we just came up with a multi-million dollar oh brand <laughs> <laughs> swoosh uh, uh, and all the Luigi Mansion games that you play, you can see his little knees are shaking. And he's like, Mario! And it's just so f- cute. I love it. And I'm just, I love it. It's I so, love them so much. Yeah, I have definitely uh, commiserated before about my connection with Luigi. And it's the same thing. It's like, he's scared of shit. I'm scared of shit. And you just, you got to do stuff anyhow. Just do it. Yeah. Ain't no choice. Oh, uh, you gotta, I love that. You got to punch some bricks and flip some shit it's backing up some ghosts sometimes i also I, i've talked about my love of horror and i think that ghost stories are so comforting mm-hmm. and it's like being in a little warm blanket so every time i play those games i just feel so like at peace and at ease so i just oh. love them they're That's amazing cool. before we go to our break here mm-hmm. uh are you familiar at all with sort of the me me uh the meme the mame, the mame, the mame uh, of the uh, the the crown, the transformation crown that came out in one of the more recent games. I don't think I am. It's a princess crown that turns characters into like a version of oh, Princess Peach. Yes, I have seen that. Yes, I have. And so you know, like the tumblers. It's in the the the, the rabbits game. Uh, is it the rabbits game? Yeah, where they become. Isn't I don't it? know. I, I gotta Google it. Let's do it. Let's Google. 
The Super Crown. Oh, it was in Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. There we go. Yeah. And it turns you into like, uh, it turns Toadette into like a peach Toadette. Yes. Uh, and so there's this whole thing that's gone off on like Reddit and Tumblr where, you know, the fans, the 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 fan base, if you will, the community mm-hmm. has run with this crown thing and started putting it on other characters and finding <laughs> out what happens with that. And so there's this Bowsette that has happened, this super sexy version of Bowser, <laughs> this lusty version of Bowser that wears the crown. Um, but then beyond that, there's King Boo who wears this <laughs> crown and becomes a sexy booette. Of course. That lust for Luigi. And oh I just need uh, everyone to go Google uh, Booette, King King Booette or whatever. Doing it and, right uh, now. And Luigi and just find some really unwholesome art. God bless the internet and your weird, weird ways. <laughs> so there's like so much like just uh, X-rated art and uh, cosplay. And it's just, uh, it's it's filthy. But at the same time, I just love how the internet can take something as simple as like, Hey, Toad can become a big princess when she gets a mar- <laughs> like a, and turn it into just the the filthiest stuff. Oh my uh, God. Never change internet. Bless never you. Change. Should we should we go to our break? Should we do, Let's our, do it. Our, our our thing? Okay, here we go. Who's that Pokemon? Who's that Pokemon? Do you have one? <laughs> I do. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, here we go. It's sort of a circle. Okay. And then off of that circle are some little sort of liney bumps. Okay. And off the side are two more little liney bumps. Okay, okay. And that's the silhouette. Circle, thingies, and liney bumps. <laughs> Circle, thingies, and liney bumps. Is it in the Mario universe? It absolutely is. Uh, okay, let me try this one okay. more time. I might have mis- misgiven that silhouette a little bit. So it's everything I said, but there's also sort of an arrowy shape at the top. Um, is it the like little squid thing? It is the little squid thing. It's blooper. Blooper. Is it sexy blooper? Da, na, 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 na. It's not sexy blooper, but god damn it, I'm about to Google if there's it's, a sexy blooper. There is blooper. a sexy blooper. <laughs> there's gotta be. Of course be. there's I, that is the internet. I, there's sexy bloopers everywhere. Blooperette is what I'm looking for since that's... Oh, yep, there they are. The thing I love about Blooper while we're on this is that uh, the more recent invention of Nintendo from like their own first party stuff is is a Splatoon. Yes. And the Inklings from Splatoon basically are in their squid form, yep. uh, a Blooper from, from Mario. It feels like some really great Nintendo connective tissue there. I, I love, love that. I like a good connection. <laughs> doesn't the rainbow connection uh but that's uh that's who's that pokemon congratulations you nailed blooper. it da, na, 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 na. it's it- blooper we're back what's next on our list lex uh best princesses but i feel like we just kind of talked about that oh i think it might be the sexy ones yeah the sexy princesses but like the sexy bowserettes and booettes oh you know what we need to do is a poll on our uh, uh, on our Insta uh, to find out which of this of uh, the sexy non-canon princesses are the best. Uh, are the are the favored? Yeah, I I, I do ah. really like Rosal Rosaline 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 Rosaline. Rosaline. Yeah. yeah, the thing that weirds me out about Rosaline and Ninen is that she's so much taller than the established canon princesses. Why is she so big? I like a big... She's from space. Oh, okay. She's from space. So So she's kind of like... She's space big. Yeah, she's stretched out because there's no gravity, so she can just grow. (laughs) Oh, like the belters from The Expanse. Exactly. (laughs) I would do a belter accent, but there's almost no chance it doesn't come off as something offensive. It was really hard to watch that series because of that accent. As soon as you'd have like some pale Canadian... Yeah, yeah, trying to do like some sort of faux Afrikaans accent. Yes, with like a little bit of like a like a little like Asian plus like fret like just don't do it. Yeah, yeah, it's never it's not it's good. never no, the best it's try. Not good. Uh yeah. But the expanse is a great show. Great series. Watch it. Let's not do we want we'll try to stay away from that tension. I think we've talked about the expanse many times. Uh best villain. Best villain. Best villain. <sighs> Hmm. 
Oh man, there's so many good ones. Let's just talk about our favorite villains. Let's let's not let's not okay, hedge ourselves let's in. Do that. One of my favorites is Birdo. Birdo's so fucking weird. <laughs> Birdo is a weird choice. <laughs> and then at some point, Birdo has become an analog for Yoshi. So like you know, they're Aww. always paired up with somebody. Mario gets paired up with you know Daisy. Uh, yeah. No, sorry, Princess with Peach, Peach and uh, then Luigi with Daisy. Yeah. Toad and Toadette. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so now, <laughs> Birdo and Yoshi. Ugh. And so Birdo sort of looks like a Yoshi, but she got that giant cavern on her face. But I kind of feel like it's our whole conversation with, like, Jughead being paired up with Ethel. Mm-hmm. Like, just because you look a, kind of alike doesn't mean you got a date. I guess it's the egg thing, too, but they shoot them out different <laughs> ends. Have you ever realized that Yoshi says yum bum when he swallows food and then shoots out an egg? Always. I didn't yum know- bum. Somehow I didn't realize it was yum bum. And then he like poops the egg out or whatever. Yeah. What did you think he was saying? <laughs> I don't know. I never paid oh, that close yeah. of attention to it. Yum yum. Oh. But it's yum bum. Yum bum. Yum yeah. bum. Yum <sighs> bum. If you've played Yoshi's Island as much as I have, you 100% oh, know. I loved Yoshi's Island. Uh, Great game. Baby Mario. Catch Yoshi, him. He's the- crying. If only I'd known that the irritation that I felt about baby Mario crying at me oh. was going to translate to real life. <gasps> Precursor. <laughs> Didn't know. So if you can't handle that in that game, don't have kids. Or at least get help before you do. I got help. Yoshi tried to give you a heads up on that. Yoshi. One. My my oh, boy. Man. So he got stuck with Birdo. Uh, Who's one um, of your faves? I, I I love, love, love Yoshi in general, but I just want to say that like the y- Yoshi's wooly crafted world that came out on sweat switch a few years mm-hmm. ago. Where everything looked like it was knit yeah. or made out of felt. That was for you. It was just the best game. Like it's like they were like, Lexi, here's your cozy this is happiness. For you, girl. Yeah. And I like I couldn't I had it written on every calendar at work. Kids were asking me about it and I'd say, Don't take this from me, I'm taking a day. I'm just gonna drink coffee and play this game and it was amazing. And I wish that like when I die, I just want it to be that game over and over Do again. Do you wanna see Yoshi as a villain ever? No. Or a Yoshi, I should say, since they're a plurality and they're not singular. Yeah, I don't think they'll ever do it. It would be sad. But maybe they'll introduce like a Noshi at some point, you know? It would be too upsetting. Since we got our Wario's and our Waluigi's, mm. which I also love hey, both I'll... of. Yeah. Fun fact, Waluigi has never appeared in like a canon like main series game. He's only in like tennis and racing, etc. Mm. He's never been in a proper game like uh, like Wario has. Okay, I gotcha. I did not know that. Yeah, you're right. I thought that people... Anyway, the internet talks like he's going to get his own game, but I guess, you know, he, one day. He better someday. I love Waluigi. Yeah. I got him on my shelf right behind me. I love my uh, weird big nose boys as a big nose boy myself. Um, I think my favorite villain-esque character are just the shy guys oh they're so good they're yeah. up there for me too shy guys are fantastic and freaky like a little no face i love it oh it's so weird and and when you think that they come from a game that was a uh you know like a draw over of a japanese game just to give them an, a different mario 2 for north america that's mm-hmm. that's wild and then they just have stayed in the canon uh in, yeah. in the world they fit so well they do amazing like i just love them. what's the og super mario 2 called it's like toki toki no panic or toki toki no dori or something i forget i thought it was no panic uh i can't remember but yeah oh i mean and since we're talking about it, one of the greatest villains that I think is due for a return is that giant frog whose name I don't fucking yes. know. Yes. Oh, I forgot about him. And the mouse that threw bombs and wore the coolest sunglasses ever. Oh, you're right. I forgot all about those ones. Angry Sun has moved into the like normal Mario canon. Um, and so have Shy Guys and I think yeah. a few others. But yeah, yeah, we haven't had a return of Wart or whatever his name was. King Wart. I feel like some of the OG ones have been replaced by some ones that I feel like we could probably get rid of. Are there villains that you don't care for that you want to get rid of? Just like the newer ones where I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, I don't understand what... I need an example of a what the fuck is this. Fawful. I don't know what the fuck that is. Exactly. I'm going to Google Fawful. Google says, did you mean Falafel? Fawful, also known as as Lord Fawful, is a Beanish character known for speaking broken English and making many food-based metaphors. Next. Come on. Can we stop with the... No. Okay, so Lord Fawful isn't like a, a character that has stayed. Lord Fawful is one of those inventions for a... a F- For a specific game. Yeah. And I don't like I don't like those ones, but I will say I do really love... Fawful can, yeah, not come back. 
um, the Coop, the Koopa, Koopa family, the Koopalings. Oh, hell yeah. Right. Like the, um, like Lenny and the one with the like weird kind of like blue mm-hmm. part in his hair. <laughs> That's Ludwig. Yeah. Ludwig. I a, yes. I had a sticker of Ludwig on my dresser as a kid. <laughs> I don't know where I got the sticker from, but I think about it. And I love their one like singular tooth that pops out. Yes. Uh, the Koopalings have always been a favorite. And that's another love reason them. that I love uh, Mario 3 so much. Yeah, There's been some controversy because they were first introduced as Bowser's kids. But now... And uh, that was the common knowledge. But then yeah. it was clarified a few years ago that they're not. Who are they? The current story... Okay, so originally the Koopalings were depicted as Bowser's children and stated to be his offspring. However... Miyamoto eventually uh, stated that Nintendo's current story is that Koopalings are not Bowser's children in 2012. Hmm. And so they're his underlings and Bowser Jr. is his only child. And the idea Hmm. of Bowser Jr., who has his place but is not for me, supplanting the brilliant children that we have here in Larry, Morton, Wendy, Iggy, Roy, Lemmy, Ludwig... No, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm there with you, 100%. No, thank you. Come on. Uh, they were so brilliant. They made that game. Yes. That was like what was so fun was getting to the end of one of those worlds and getting on that airship and catching those dudes. And fighting. Yes, that was great. Uh, so recanonize the Koopalings, don't, please. Don't forget your children, Bowser. Don't forget your children. They're going to send them on Mori. You left them in another airship, yeah, and had to... Which brings us to a more important question, since we're just rolling here. Uh, who, who's their mom? Any of them? Who's the mom? Um, suggestion. Just food for thought. Mm-hmm. Um, lizards can be asexual and just pop shit out. Holy shit. Yes. Yeah. If Yoshi can pop some eggs out, so can Bowser. And we need that in a game now. I think that's what's up. I think that Bowser lays eggs. You heard it here first. He's trying to find a mother. By right. taking Peach. Right. But he's... Producing on his own. He is fertile. Mother, father. Yeah, I think that he's that, like, intersex. And he just keeps popping them out. Yeah. And he's like, I need someone. There's princesses out there. I need help. None of them are helping me. First of all, Bowser, it doesn't have to be a princess. You just need to find a co-parent that works. And I think you get that a bit with Kamek. Kamek? K- yeah, who is like... Who is- I thought was a female Koopa forever. But it turns out it's not. I never even really thought about oh, it. I thought about it so much. <laughs> really? Okay. That's I didn't think about it until there's like a lady Kamek who's like in pink with gray hair. And I was like, oh. oh. Is that necessary? Yeah. I was just like, did I ever tell you about I got into an argument at a party once with a guy who was, in my opinion, trying to demonstrate to the room how woke he was by coming up to me and saying like, did you like Mario games? And I was like, yeah, I love Mario games. And he was like, but does the princess need to be saved? I was like, this is what we're going to do right now have a fight like, come on man i'm blinking so hard right now <laughs> i am that meme uh where the guy blinks and then opens his eyes again you know you know the one i know the one you know the meme i'm talking about i know the meme yeah the mime the mime uh yeah like we get it thanks for giving us basic uh an intro to gender politics <laughs> thank you yes uh unless you're an idiot Hey, everybody, this guy here is a feminist. Like every person that came into the party, he basically found a way to get it to that. And we were like, did you read a book today? Yeah, he just, you know, he found a Wikipedia article, (laughs) not even a book. He saw a quick uh, TikTok on it and was just like, I got I'm I'm there with you. Yeah. So Princess Peach, uh, yeah, she could have saved herself. Yeah, we get it. Thanks, pal. Yeah, she doesn't need, she doesn't need Mario. I don't need a man. Great. That's cool. Just plan. God. I mean, just yeah, insufferable's insufferable, no matter uh, what you're trying to get across. That's the thing. Yeah, pe- progressive people can also be assholes. Hey, like, I'm ugh. right here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this whole podcast. <laughs> My ears are burning. <laughs> Did we just call ourselves out? Oh no. What have we done? Uh, Is this self-reflection? Is this that uh, self-awareness I've been told about? 
do we have to ponder our existence now? No, let's just talk about Mario. <laughs> Mario, it's a me. One thing that we didn't talk about with Mario 64 mm-hmm. is that great thing at the beginning of the game where you could stretch his face. Oh, yeah. Like pull his yeah. nose and his ears. Pull it, just and take snaps yeah, of it and that like was leave good. it that way. Polygons at work, which is my new band name. I also just really like the jumping, how he'd be like, Wah! Huh? Yeah, he has three different <laughs> sounds that he so makes good. as he does his triple jump. Yeah, it's so good. And it was it was adorable. Wahoo! Oh, just so cute. Uh, who's that? Charles Martinet, I think, is the mm-hmm. voice of Mario uh, uh, up until recently. Yeah. <laughs> Should this be the last thing we talk about? Is this our outro? No, here's all the people who have died that we appreciate. Like, ah. Oh, I don't think Charles Martinet is dead, is he? I thought he died. No, no, I, he was just replaced. By oh my God. someone that uh, is arguably less Qualified? charismatic. I thought he died. Okay. Uh, hold up. Don't quote me. He is still alive and he's only 67. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Nobody start a Twitter thread about how he's dead. <laughs> Don't do that. It's bad. It's bad juju. I was in my office today and the the one of the wonderful people that I work with next door... Um, her Google feed hasn't been updated in like forever. And so she clicked on the news thing and it popped up and I just heard this muffled yell from her office because the door was closed. Oh my God, Ray Liotta's dead. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, but. For a while now. She's like, did this just happen? And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, it was when it just happened? Okay. No, it was today that she did this. Because that's almost a year ago. I know. <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> Big fan of Ray, then, huh? <laughs> I, like the world is crumbling, and I was like, eh, "It's been, a, it's been, it's been several months." <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm not trying to take away Ray's uh, cultural cash, he but was it, it's, 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 there's there's artists that have given me pause when they've passed, and uh, Yoda was, wasn't necessarily one of them. I mean, different strokes, right? For uh, different folks yeah his stroke was mostly in good fellas <laughs> ah yes there it is yeah drugs and sex okay uh yeah so anyhow charles martinet still alive unlike ray Liotta. <laughs> have you gotten your t-shirt yet as a complete tangent here no i have not because <laughs> i'm i think i might have to buy just one too <laughs> Well, let's just see if I get it first because this could be a scam. And they're just like, this guy just keeps throwing money into the void. <laughs> they just stole <laughs> stole my $40. You can try to get it back, but we both my know it's gone. <laughs> to get you the t shirt. <laughs> it's gone. He spent it on <laughs> on uh, cough syrup and, and a 40. Uh, <laughs> it's open mic night at my house. <laughs> I would love to see his stand up where he's standing there, like, and this guy just keeps giving me money. <laughs> with the hand over with his the mouth, hand over his the, you know the thing. <laughs> the thing. Jeremy Hots, right? Yeah, it's Hots. It's Hots. We're Hots for Hots. <laughs> We're Hots for Hots. Sorry, uh, Paul, you've been uh, usurped by Mister Hots. That's our new celebrity crush here. No, that's not true. Don't joke. It's not true. Not at all. No, Obviously Paul, not true. Paul is that's our the favorite. Joke. We love you, Paul. Come on the podcast, Paul. Paul. If, Paul. Paul. What if I was their favorite? No one can replace Paul. I just want so many good things for him. All right, let's get into this movie thing before we call it a night. Uh, Is there anything else we should get into about Mario? We've just gone off. We have favorite characters. We have least favorite characters. Best game. I love Toad. Okay, what's your favorite sort of like offshoot game? Not Mario, but Mario like, you know, spin-off. Aside from the Luigi Mansion series, which I feel I already talked about. They're amazing. Because they're all so good. Yeah, this, see, this is this is tough. Like Yoshi's Yoshi's sort of series is so good. Enjoyed that. I also really liked um, Captain Toad, the Adventure mm-hmm. Tracker. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is so good. So cute. That was a fun one. Like moving, the, that was kind of like that uh, game Fez where you're moving the actual platform around i feel like all of the i can't i I think it'd be easier to find one i didn't vibe with than one that i like any one particular one that i love the most because they're so good they're usually really well thought out nintendo puts a lot of effort into making these series of games really good we haven't talked about mario kart oh i mean come on 
You got to talk about Mario Kart. It is. Yeah, we got to do it that. It is. Mario Kart from the first uh-huh. Super Nintendo version has been mm-hmm. everything to everyone. Uh, but yeah, when it hit uh, SNES, it was even better. And then Nintendo 64, I would have giant like parties with friends oh, yeah. where you just sit around and Mario Kart it up for hours. Forever, yeah. You go back and forth between Mario Kart and <laughs> it is, it's, GoldenEye. Yeah, and GoldenEye. Back and forth. No odd That's job. <laughs> Those are the rules. Nobody can be on Quick, job. Pizza Hut's here. Yeah. Like, okay. So what, what's your setup? Who's the, who do you go to for your driver? It's usually Luigi. Hmm. Okay. I mean, all right, I all right. don't care about weight or all of that stuff. Uh, I will play nowadays. Now that he's there, uh, I will play Waluigi. Okay. With his <laughs> knees sticking out of the car. <laughs> sticking out. They're so, so great. They're so sharp. Like put Waluigi <laughs> in a, in a proper game already. Give him his own Wario style game. Like, come on. Those games were so much fun on the Game Boy, the Wario games. Uh, I like the OG ones. Yeah. Like the six golden coins and stuff like that. Like where he just sort of, I'm greedy and I need money. Yeah. And he's just like kind of running through every single game, like smashing stuff, eating garlic, farting. (laughs) It's great. It's great. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, Yeah. Waluigi needs that for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Good, 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 good. Um, Yeah. Where were we going with this? Oh, yeah. I usually play, uh, I used to play, I think, OG uh, Super NES. I played uh, one of the Koopas, you know, because mm. they don't have names. Koopa. Just Koopa. Koopa Troopa. Because yeah. um, I like that they were really fast getting back going after they got knocked down because I got hit a lot. Mm. And uh, that quick acceleration was good for me. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but yeah, it's Luigi now. I just go with favorite character, I think, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will occasionally play... Uh, Iggy or Lemmy now mm. if I want somebody a little bigger okay yeah I don't I don't mess around with the weight or something, nothing like that I just Yoshi Yoshi boom and done. okay so do you have settings though for the cards and stuff that you prefer um I don't like the bikes mm, too hard I don't to like, steer I don't like that I just find them too wobbly. responsive yeah. and wobbly and I like just a traditional cart nothing fancy just go on go on the course bam bam love it in the words of another famous Italian American, Emerald Glagasi, bam! <laughs> Did you have a favorite track? Oh no! Okay, I cu- I couldn't recall a favorite track. I love so many tracks. Uh, I know which one I hate. It sticks in my mind. Toad Turnpike. I've hated oh, it forever. You don't like the cars, hey? I do not want to get hit by real traffic when I'm playing Mario Kart. <laughs> get that fucking bus out of there no i hate it i'm just looking at the one from uh mario kart 8 so the most recent yeah that is the current yeah it's been re-released and Mm -hmm. remastered and upgraded i love 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 uh the mario circuit but um just because it's a classic but bowser's castle that thing always good so cool I just love it. Is that the one with the wavy carpets that you can do tricks well, and then off like of? shit, like the the castles, like got flames coming at you, and yeah, the thwomps and stuff. There's so many good ones. Um, they're still releasing new tracks for that. Yeah, constantly. There's always new ones coming out. I was just playing it with my younger brother. Stopped by, and we were playing it. And there's like this year, there's set to be like another mm-hmm. five different like series of cups. Yeah. That's wild. The support that I don't game gets. think that I like Rainbow Road in this iteration because it's up in space and you're working your way back mm. down to Earth. It's too stressful. Oh, it's terrifying. Oh, do you remember the fear of OG Rainbow Road with no like railings? And, yeah. Ugh. You're just on it. Good luck. Oh, the ghost houses Whoa. too. Holy shit. I am feeling the terror yes. of a ghost house it's right a... now. It's just so. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, those are good ones. God, those are great, great games. Great games, well, Mario. You've done so much for us. What can we do for you? Yeah, we, thanks, Mario. We can't save you from Chris <laughs> Pratt. Ugh, yeah. You know what? The so movie's coming out. I'm stoked for it. I want to watch it. It looks like a lot of fun. Charlie Day as Luigi, our favorite character. You got Jack Black as Bowser, just like chewing it up. I love Jack Black. I'm like I'm a believer. I I love the the fact that he does the hell out of things. Oh yeah. Instead of just like, oh, it's me, Chris Pratt, but I'm also Mario. No, I like Jack Black. Is in, I'm sure he was sweaty while he was doing his lines. It was just such a weird choice to make that hit one of his lines. I'm Chris Pratt, but I'm also Mario. 
What? I mean, I didn't write it, Ben. I'm not the writer. It's really fourth wall breaking. I don't know what they were thinking. I'm not the writer, but I do feel like I could have written. Well, I think we've had this chat is that, uh, you know, Mario's sort of always your almost silent character in a lot of ways. Yes. It's the, you know, the character surrogate or whatever, or the player yeah. surrogate. And so, you know, you don't need Chris Pratt to be all that interesting. The rest of the world is going to be interesting enough and your Luigi's and your Bowser's are going to... I feel like it, have that. it could just be Toad. Because basically Toad is the narrator in all games anyway. Ah. Not like that. I mean, I don't think I could listen to two hours of like... Wah, 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 wah. Like, ah, shh. <laughs> Who is voicing Toad? I can't remember. Or, or, or the main Toad, since Toad is apparently uh, also a species. I hope it's like Liam Neeson or something. That'd no. No way. That's who I would pick. Who is voicing <laughs> Toad in Mario movie? Keegan Michael Key. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, Chris Pratt, you you just be boring and and maybe just try not to get in the way of your betters. I've got the whole cast list. Let's uh let's take a boo at this one. I've got the whole cast <laughs> list. Oh, Google. Anya uh Taylor Joy as Peach. Uh, Anya Taylor. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. I, yeah. Um, I mean, she's fine. Whatever. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's fun. I I mean. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to hear it. There, He hasn't been in the trailers or anything yet, so. Uh, Fred Armisen as Cranky, Cr- as Cranky Kong. Oh, Cranky's going to be in it, too? Wow. This is blowing my mind. Um, Foreman Spike is a new character. And is voiced by Sebastian Maniscalco. I don't know who that is, but I know who Spike is. I think he's a stand-up comedian. Oh, and then there's various cameos, like the, like the question mark box. Oh, somebody's voicing the question mark box. Yeah, Charles Martinet. <laughs> oh, so OG Mario voice gets to be a, a question mark block. Thanks for all of your service. Go be the fucking block. Cool. Oh, Jesus. Oh you know that was God. filmed after everyone got mad about Chris Pratt, like, too. No, no, no. He's in the movie, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we have a great little homage to, <laughs> to Mr. Martinet. Oh, it's he's it's fantastic. It's respectful. It's oh Chris Pratt God. beats him with a fist. It's like a marketing survey cast the movie. <laughs> <laughs> they usually do. It's just like an AI algorithm was just like, ah, here you go. <laughs> Cool. Oh, Thanks. now we know who wrote the movie. <laughs> it's an algorithm. <laughs> it's me, I'm Mario, but also Chris Pratt. <laughs> hey, TM. What a weird that's, line. That's my line. TM. The trademark. Oh, sorry. Don't know your can fanfic. Take... Your Chris Pratt is Mario fanfic. I can honestly promise you, if I were to write a fanfic, Chris Pratt would be nowhere near it. But he has to be now. You promised nope. us. No. One done. I had the one line. Book's done. What if he shows up and then the real Mario jumps on him? But not in a sexual way, which is how I made that sound. Yeah, like, like, like in the in the Goomba stomping way. Goombas uh, are great. I feel like that's too. That would be okay. no too good for the movie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I feel <laughs> it's really uh, it's really popular shit on Chris Pratt right now. So let's do it, Chris. If you're listening to this, you were a fine Star Lord in the first movie. I really did like Guardians of the Galaxy. I loved that. And Andy and, from Parks and, and Recreation. And everybody loves Andy, but what, loves you Andy. know, you fell off. You tried well. So John has told me that the Chris Pratt. You married a Schwarzenegger. What's his like? Uh, his his action TV show that he's in. I couldn't tell you because it looked boring as hell. John watched it. He said it was fine. Damned with faint praise. Yeah, like good good job, I guess, Chris Pratt. Eh. And that's probably <sighs> what I say when I watch the Mario movie, which is going to be brilliant. I can't wait. Um, you know, but Bob Hoskins will also be Mario to me forever. Uh, Bobby, he, he can they bring him back for that? I wonder if he has a cameo as another block. <laughs> everyone, everyone who's ever is he alive I don't still? Know. Do we Google this? You know, I let's leave think, it a mystery. I don't think he let's is. Leave it a mystery. Bob Hoskins, if you're out there, next time on Dark <laughs> Matters, is Bob Hoskins this alive? This is our question. We're going to leave you with till next week, uh, and we'll answer it at the top of the the next episode. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're 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 going to wrap it up in the Mushroom Kingdom for tonight uh grab a, a warp pipe back to reality no no oh, stop no, it don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna uh, hey one thing before we go the poison mushroom from yeah. the lost levels mm. nobody got to experience that because it was from the original sort of japanese well everyone got to experience it because it got released in the lost level stuff but it was from the original super mario brothers 2 which was literally super mario's one but with new levels and a poison mushroom Oh. Like it was the same style of game, I mean. And then yeah, you get like the, the little North purple. American. 
Yeah, yeah, the purple one. So yeah. you do get that released here in the All Stars or whatever game release, but yeah. uh, Lost Levels stuff. But yeah, Poison Mushroom needs to make a comeback. Yeah, that, it's yeah. a good thing to yeah. do. Throw it yeah. in there. Do mushrooms. That's what we're saying. <laughs> if 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 Mar and the thought that we want to leave you with for the week, if Mara's taught us anything, it's that uh, eating random plants can only be good. You could get big, you could get fiery. You could turn into a raccoon. Perfect. Boing, boing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Is that how <laughs> it does it? Is that? When he spins with his tail. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's just a pigeon. <laughs> a pigeon. <laughs> oh, he hasn't been a pigeon yet. Okay. What power do you want Mario to have before we go? I like when he gets really big and starts stomping on shit. Smash, smash. Oh, oh, in the like new Godzilla. Super Mario Brothers? Ah, yeah, I where love it. Goes it. All, yeah, where he goes kaiju and just like breaks pipes and yes. smashes everything. That was a really good ad. That's my favorite. Uh, I like Cat. But what would you give him as a power? What was something that you think would be cool? I hate the spring, by the way. I think that's dumb. Yeah, like one that he doesn't already have. Yeah. Come up with one right now. Let's hear a good one. Oh, no. That's a hard one. Because I've already talked about like my superhero would be going home early. Just like I'm really good at it. <laughs> Maybe he can have a power where he falls asleep and gets extra hearts. Yeah, that's not how Mario. He falls works. asleep right away. He dreams of having a child, wakes up, cries for a bit, and then goes off <laughs> with his day. Yeah, he dreams and has to go back and fight uh, King Ward again because oh, that was wait. all a dream. If you finish that game, he wakes up at the end. He the fact that he doesn't have anything stereotypical Italian in these games is always kind of interesting. Like. Does he eat a plate of spaghetti and then he's like Popeye and he's like, ooh, so strong. And then he like starts stomping yeah. around more. Yeah. Just make it really, really bigoted. Just go to sleep. It. <laughs> Those old stereotypes when the Italians first got to North America. Oh, no. The big, okay. No, in all seriousness, if I were to give him a superpower. It's a me, a meatball. It would be the power of truth. <laughs> Does that mean? I don't know. To get a lasso. <laughs> you know what? Good enough. <laughs> We're uh, thanks for it. listening. <laughs> this is Dork Matters. Uh, with me, as always, Lexi Hunt, your Ed Dorkator, and I'm your dad, Dork, Ben Rankle. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks for another fantastic episode, I'm sure. Uh, until then, stay safe and have fun. I mean, Dork, 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 Dork. Dork, Dork. Yeah, how did you nearly forget that? Ben? I forget everything. I know. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Dork Matters. If you like the podcast, subscribe, give us a rating, and tell your friends about us. If you are a fellow dork and have a dork issue that you think we need to discuss, tell us on our social media. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also check out original art and other content from Ben and myself. We'd like to say a big thank you to Yabra for the use of our theme song, Dance, off of their Astral EP, as well as a thank you to Jess Schmidt for producing and editing our podcast. Thanks, Jess. Dork Matters. This podcast is created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Nations, which includes the Siksika, the Begaini, and the Gaina. We also acknowledge the Stony Nakoda Nation, Sutena, and Métis Nation Region 3.